Hi guys, what's up? It's Lindsay and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's been a little over six months since my last trend recap and I feel like the beginning of a new season is the perfect time to really hash out what kind of trends you're looking for, looking to thrift, looking to buy, as well as what maybe you don't want to wear that you usually always wear and just kind of like do a census of your closet. So we are going to be talking about things that I'm loving as well as things that I'm not not loving, do a little bit of de-influencing. Sometimes it's necessary. I totally get like Instagram goggles with some outfits that just I know I won't like on myself because I know myself. Um, so we are just gonna dive right in and thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy it and I wanna know what you are into as well because I feel like that's like the most fun of doing videos like this. The first thing I have been just obsessed with and can't get enough of is square necks. I feel like a boat neck is something I used to avoid so much because I hate dealing with your bra strap sticking out. But I recently got a really cute square neck top from Little High Little Low and it's thick enough so you don't have to wear a bra. And now I'm on board. I feel like it is flattering, it's timeless. It looks really put together and it definitely has that kind of like preppy, old money aesthetic, if you will. I hate to use all of these like fake terminology that just like comes out of nowhere. Um, but I do think that a square neck is a trend that has been around for long enough that it's not a micro trend. You can buy that, you can invest in it, and uh, you won't look back and be like, why did I wear that? Because it's August when I'm filming this, I feel like I can get away with saying, flip-flops are a trend I'm really into because I know it's controversial and I typically, I don't love sandals, but I think that there is something so flattering to the feet, to the legs about a flip-flop. It is just so minimal that it really elongates your legs and I feel like the examples that I have shown are very classy takes. They're just very casual and effortless and accessible. I feel like everyone either has a pair of flip-flops or if you want to go out and buy them, they're like $10 maybe, max. I've also really been eyeing halter tops and halter dresses. I feel like there is something so sexy and again, timeless about a halter. I love the halters that are like a V-neck. I saw a TikTok the other day talking about how a lot of tops that look good with cleavage, like bustier tops, are actually really hard to wear if you have naturally larger breasts. And so something like a halter or tops that are like two large triangles angles I find to be comfortable and flattering and so that is like a style that I have been trying to buy more just because it is like easy you don't have to worry about like shuffling things into where they're supposed to go that is on my personal thrift wish list for sure I've also been seeing a lot more of these very structured woven bags and I don't know if I'm necessarily going to buy in on it because I already have just so many handbags but it's a style that I have been really liking because I feel like it is in between a Bottega hobo bag and a basket purse it's like they had just the perfect love child that is structured carrying a basket into a workplace might be kind of hard but carrying one of these bags I mean they're so chic. I just think they're really cool. I feel like I've seen Lizzie Hadfield wear them a lot. She has been like my current style inspiration for sure. She has this really chunky Kate belt that is so expensive, but just looks so cool every time she wears it. And I feel like she really has that like quiet luxury look down. Leading into fall, I will definitely be wearing my fry boots and tall boots as much as possible again. I feel like that's just like a staple in my personal wardrobe, but I've been seeing rain boots pop up a lot and just look so cool. Like why does everyone at Glastonbury look so cool? 
I think it's the rain boots. And I know that wearing rain boots there is like truly a necessity because it's a muddy festival. But anytime I see a tall rain boot, I'm like, that is just so effortlessly cool. Um, and it's so impractical for here in LA. Like there is no reason for me to ever own those. But if you are in a city that rains a lot, I feel like it is a chic and interesting, fun material to play with, like a rubber tall boot, especially like the hunter boots. I'm sure they could be easy to find secondhand. That's a trend that I really love, but just probably won't personally invest in because of living in California my whole life. But a pair of shoes that I have been on the lookout ever since I tried some on at a thrift store were driving loafers, which is just a slight bit different than a normal loafer. It has like a rubber sole that kind of like goes up around the shoe. And specifically snakeskin ones are what I'm trying to thrift. You can have like a couple different pairs of the same shoe. You know what I mean? Like if you're a sneaker girl, you love a specific pair of sneakers, have them in a couple colors because it's you, it's your style. And that's kind of how I feel about loafers because I have two near identical pairs and here I am thinking about a third, but I'll wear them, I know that. I feel like the trend of wearing shorts with unpredictable tops has been really big, like athletic shorts with blouses and sweat shorts with button ups. Um, and I'm really looking forward to wearing knit sweaters with either denim shorts, athletic shorts, these kind of like linen shorts I'm wearing right now. I am just so tired of having to wear a tank top every day that I'm really excited to wear sweaters. And I've also really been loving the look of a buttoned up cardigan layered so cute, but also just on its own. I've been really leaning into preppy style, which is kind of unexpected for me, it, you know, with my given history of having a more edgy style my whole life. But I think that they, the two can like coexist in a perfect world, like wearing a baggy jean with a sweet little cardigan and like a cute little loafer with like a chunky belt and, um, you know, just like edgy bits but also soft, dainty, like kind of like East Coast girl style. That's what I've currently been into. Don't know how to describe it other than whatever that means. People love naming stuff. Strawberry milk nails, fairy core, um, there's no end. Um, but I really don't know how to describe my personal style because it does ebb and it flows, but I've been pretty happy with it lately and just feeling very much myself, just embracing wearing a lot of basics and heavy on the vintage. That pretty much sums up all of my currently yearning for things. I also did write down pastel yellow, monochrome outfits, which again, aren't super new, but I saw my friend Alexa mention that pastel yellow is a trend. Sorry, my robot heard that. I am sure you will see some fall styling videos soon once it actually gets cold in LA because it is still like 80 degrees. So I'm, I'm not opening my sweater box yet. Now for a couple trends that I do not personally see myself investing in anytime soon. I have been seeing a resurgence in kick flares. And if you were around in like 2016, 2017, you know what kick flares are. Such an awkward cropped length and also a flare. And I just feel like they're like the antithesis to what I want in pants right now, which is like a flowy straight leg starting at the hip. I want there to be movement. In my brain, there is a very sharp distinction between a capri, which is either straight leg or really tight and a kick flare, which is fit in flare and cropped. Let me know if you agree. It's just not for me. Same goes for knitted shorts, which has been so huge this summer, like micro mini shorts, crocheted shorts. They're really cute. I want to like them, but I just know my body and that when I'm bloated, 
I don't want to be wearing a mini short. I want to be wearing a denim short. I want to be wearing something with structure. And those shorts are just not forgiving. I've worn them before I've tried uh, in the past. I know what it feels like to be wearing something like that, something that tight and that short. And that's just not, not my journey, but I do think that they're absolutely freaking adorable, but you never know, I could change my mind. I've also been seeing a massive uptick in wearing jerseys. I feel like a very specific personal style can pull this off, but I just, I don't like sports. I feel like I would just feel like I'm in a costume. It doesn't have a personal connection to me. And I feel like that's where these micro trends can get lost. Like if you see that bloomers are in and you have always loved ruffles, you and that micro trend, it won't be a micro trend for you. Whereas if I wear Solomon's and I have never stepped foot in a natural waterfall, like it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And that's like how I feel with the Jersey trend. For other people, 10 out of 10. But for me, it's giving question marks. Um, so that's just my personal take with micro trends and like, I guess how I choose which ones I am gonna partake in instead of just like trying out all of them, which you absolutely can do. But I feel like I've just learned from the past of like, maybe don't do that. And now to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. They make it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience and sell anything from product to content, even your own time, all in one place, all on your time. I've been using Squarespace to host my website since I was in college, using it as a portfolio site for my graphic design work when I was looking for jobs post-grad. And now I use it to represent my social media presence all in one place since I am a full-time creator. And I was able to do that seamlessly thanks to their thousands of flexible professional templates that you can adjust at any time to fit your unique needs. They allow you to customize your look, update content, and add features as often as you want to. Their reimagined drag and drop technology makes it super intuitive and easy to customize every design detail for both desktop and mobile. Squarespace also gives you access to powerful analytics tools, which is super helpful for tracking performance. You can learn where site visitors and sales are coming from and analyze which channels on your website are the most effective. If you've been thinking about making a website or you need one for an upcoming project or business you've been thinking of launching, you can get a free trial at squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash lindsayrem to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon with a new video.